Hi guys, welcome to our week one class. As this is our very first mission, we'll be focusing on completing the whole process from brainstorming ideas to submitting the final product to be released on your shop. So jot down questions as you follow along and ask them on our Discord channel during my office hour. Let's get started. Our week one mission is making your own content lenses. I chose this item category because it'll allow you to get the feel of creating in Blender to actually realizing the final product with less complications. And also it's a good bang for your buck item as it takes less time to make it and you can create as many as you want in different looks and colors once you have made your Zepetto file. So let me show you the workflow of making a Zepetto item. We'll create a 3D model in Blender Unmap a UV, also in Blender, then texturing in Photoshop. We'll apply the texture to our Zepetto avatar in Unity. And finally, we'll upload your item on Zepetto Studio to be released on your shop. When creating something, anything from scratch, it is very useful to brainstorm your ideas and decide on your concept beforehand. Think about what kind of look you would like for your context. Here are some examples, dreamy, cute or cat eye or anime look or realistic collect some reference images and pinterest is my best friend when it comes to image searching once you have a clear concept look for a specific image close to your concept in png format to save i recommend searching a keyword eye lens png plus your concept on google then select a few to save as a png file We'll use these later in the texturing stage. Now it's time to go on to Blender. I'll see you there. Let's open our default Blender file I've shared on our Discord channel. As I mentioned in our last tutorial, I've included some surprise gifts in this file. Here you have a female body mask that we'll use for our future missions, along with some clothing objects in the Zepetto reference folder. These are all provided by Zepetto and you can download them on their website, but I've organized it for you in a more efficient way so it'll be less confusing and easier to transfer weights when we do rigging later on. I've also diminished the number of bones in the creator base set since the petal restricts the number of bones to less than 100. What we downloaded had more than 100, so that's all set for you. All right, let's go on to making our contact lenses. Go to our mask, skin mail. Tap key to switch to edit mode. We're going to duplicate these eyeballs. To select the whole eyeball, hotkey L for linked. Place your mouse over to the part you want to select and L will select everything that's linked as one piece. Shortcut Shift D or Mesh Duplicate. Right then, when you move your mouse, you'll see an extra pair of eyeballs floating around, but we want to paste it in the same place. So right click and it'll be pasted right where the original eyeballs are. So again, let me go back. Control Z to undo. Place your mouse over to the part that you want to select. L to select the whole linked area. Again, on the left side, L. Now shift D to duplicate, right click to place it in place. And when it's still selected, we want to separate these two eyeballs. So P, shortcut P for separate and selection. Now toggle back to object mode and you'll see in the outliner, you have a new object here. Hide the skin mail 
to see the separated eyeballs. And let's rename this object to contacts underscore zero zero one, or you can name it lens zero zero one. I recommend renaming the objects always to be clear and concise and include the Zepedo category like contacts, lens, or if it's address dr, if it's a top, top, underscore 001, because this is your first lens item. In Korea, term lens is more used commonly to say contacts, so whichever is familiar for you, lens or contacts, because I think those are interchangeable in Zepedo category. And there we have it. That's it. We have ourselves a 3D model of contact lenses. There is a file on Zepedo Studio website that you can download for a similar model, but I wanted you to try making it on your own and we'll have a slight different approach on UV mapping. So if you'd like, you can reference the file on the website. And now let's work on the UV. Let's enlarge the UV window. What you see here is the designated box and we'll have to lay out the UV inside this box. There are times when you do place them outside the box, but we'll stick to the basic for now. So go back to the 3D viewport, select your eyeball, tap key to go to edit mode, A to select all, and all of a sudden you see something in your UV editor. Now make sure that this UV sync selection is enabled. This will allow the UV to reflect the changes we make in our 3D objects right away. So let's say that if we were to delete some part of the eyeball, it'll be reflected right away in the UV as well. Control Z to undo. Now remember how I said we need to place everything in this box? Currently this eyeball the left eyeball is outside this box, so we need to place them inside the box. There are two ways that we can do it. We can select the whole thing and scale, S for scale, scale it down to fit it inside the box. Second method, the eyes and the pupils look the same on both sides, so we can overlap them on top of each other, unless you would like a different look for your left and right eye. Let's check to see if the UVs are aligned top to bottom, left to right, the way you see in the model. So try selecting the top half of the UV and you can see that these are flipped. So we need to mirror this along the Y axis. This is the Y axis and this is the X axis. Select the two here, right click, mirror along Y. Select again the top half and you can see that now it's aligned. So we'll move this up so that it's overlapping exactly on top of the right eyeball. So select these two, hit G to move, and we wanna move it along Y axis, that's up and down. So after hitting G, hit Y to lock your movement along Y axis. You can try to overlap it as best as you can. like this or we can also select linked here so to place your cursor over and l to select all linked and here l again to select all linked g move y along y axis and one to place it right on top of it it works this way because the width and the height of this designated square is one unit so there we have it we'll export our uvs drag select or all to select all or you can select all from the 3d viewport and it'll select everything that's in the uv as well we'll name it contacts underscore 001 underscore uv so we know that it's a uv image save it in the same location where you saved your blender file make sure the format is in png and the size 1024 by 1024 and export and I'll see you in Photoshop to start texturing. Let's open up Photoshop or other image editing tool you prefer. I'll be using Photoshop, but if you have any questions when using other programs, ask on our Discord channel.
go to file, open, go to the location you saved your UV file. Then we'll drag and drop a reference image called Zapero Eye Reference, the one that I shared on Discord, but you can also find it on Zapero website under 3D Lens Guide. Let's organize our layers here. So let's name this UV and drag and place it on top of the reference image. Let's change the opacity of the UV. Select the UV layer, opacity to maybe 50. This way you'll be able to see your texture better. Create a new layer. Click on the little plus button here. This layer is for the white of the pupil. And as you can see from the reference image, it's not pure white, it's more like a beige color. This reflects more realistic on our Zapero avatar, so we'll use the same color. So using the eyedropper tool, hotkey I, we'll pick the same color as the background. With the new layer selected, Alt Backspace to fill with the foreground color. Let's rename the layers. So this one as base, and we'll place it at the bottom. Then let's again drag and drop our pupil image that we saved previously. So I have my blue eye reference. Just click enter once and it'll be pasted. Let's move it up one so you can see it. And whenever you drag and drop an image to a Photoshop file, you'll see this little icon here in the corners. To be able to edit these images, select and right click rasterize layer. Now you see the little icon gone and you can freely edit the image. You can draw and paint your own iris design, but there's a little trick that I use and that's using the saved image. There are many reference images online, as I mentioned, and they're useful sources. So use them to save time if you'd like. Hopefully you've prepared a PNG image without a background like mine. Looks like the image is already centered, but if not, center it by selecting the layer and just move it around to the center. We'll shrink the image to somewhat match with the size of the eye reference here. The control T, holding Alt, grab any corners of the image and drag in and out to match the iris size. Let go of the mouse click first and then the Alt key, otherwise the image will not scale from the center point. So if you see up close, it's a little bit off to the right, so let's move it a little bit to the left with your arrow to the left on your keyboard. Turn off the UV and the reference image for now to see how it looks. It looks okay, but you can see when you go up close that the outline of the image is a little bit jagged and not so clean. So let's fix that. Let's turn the UV layer back on. Create a new layer. Go to Marquee Tool. Right click to see other options. And we'll choose the Elliptical Marquee Tool. Then click and drag holding shift and this will give you a perfect circle. Place it in the center with the new layer selected. Choose a different foreground color. Just any color for now. And again, we'll do alt backspace to fill it with the foreground color that we just chose. Control D to deselect. And I think I want to make it a little bit bigger. So Control T again. Alt drag to match it a little bit better. Turn off UV again. Turn off the circle layer we just created. Control click on the thumbnail. Then you can see that the circle is selected. Select the blue eye reference layer. And from there, we're going to copy and paste 
and to do those two steps at once, control J and you see a new layer has been created. Show and hide to see the difference. Now the outline of this image is much clearer. So let's name this one blue iris. And if you don't want this outline to be so clear and crisp, you can blur the outlines as well. So go back to the original blue eye reference image. Again, control click the thumbnail of the circle. Go to select, modify, feather. And let's say maybe 10 pixels. Okay. And from the original blue eye reference layer, control J to copy and paste. Now you see that the edges are blurred. Clear and smoother. Clear. Blue iris. Feather. Here's another tip. When you're happy with your iris design and you want it in different colors, select your image layer, go to adjustments, hue saturation, clip mask to your iris image by clicking the square with the arrow. Now you can play around the hue, saturation, lightness to make different color lenses. Once you're done, unhide unnecessary layers, show base layer and your iris image. We're going to export it as PNG. So file, export, export as, and you'll see a menu like this. And the format should be PNG. We'll adjust the image size to 512. We export it in this size because this is the Zapero standard size. We've exported the UV in 1024 so you can work on texturing in a larger window. It's always better to texture in a larger image size than save it to the required size. We'll export it. And instead of UV, now it's a texture file. So we'll name it texture. And if you're going to make different colors, you can also add, this one is blue, so blue and save. You've reached the end of week one mission part one. Take your time learning new tools and making your own textures. And I'll see you in part two for rigging, also known as weight transferring, masking, converting a VX file to Zepeda file, and finally uploading to Zepeda Studio.